Ever since I heard about Forever Skies, I thought to myself, cool, this looks very similar to another survival game Subnautica. Just this one is not underwater, so most likely it is going to be great. At the time of making this video, the game is still in early access and I was always very keen to try it for myself. When the game appeared on the Lurkit platform for creators, I applied to get a key and received it a very long time ago, just never came to playing it for one or another reason. But that finally changed last week. I was all pumped up to finally try it. In the end though, my mood changed, and not for the best. Let's talk about why. So I booted up the game and sat in the select difficulty screen for a few minutes, trying to decide if I want a challenge for this one, and they ended up going for the permadeath option, since I thought I will value the life of my character more, make more calculated decisions during my gameplay, and make it as realistic as possible. If you don't want to bring a knife to a gunfight, you have to think things through beforehand. At least that's what I thought is going to happen once I chose the permadeath difficulty, and oh boy I was wrong. Apparently, some sort of a virus spread throughout the Earth and an apocalypse followed later, turning the planet into a wasteland where the surface is covered in a layer of dust and the only way you can survive there is above all of that. The game starts and a cutscene plays where you are shot out of the space station in a pod towards Earth and you crash land onto a building. You wake up and read the tablet in front of you. Apparently, you play as a scientist who has a mission to find out what kind of a virus is plaguing the Earth and maybe find a cure for it. Sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? This is where the survival begins. So I started to explore the building I crashed on and found a blimp on the roof that you can fly to explore the rest of the world. Just gotta fix it up first. The blimp is basically your home away from home. You can expand it, decorate it, furnish it and improve it in a load of ways which is honestly really cool. It is always nice to have a mobile base in video games and this one does it really well. I gathered enough materials to craft myself a ship engine so I could move that blimp, but before moving on to explore the world, a very nice voice that is basically identical to the voice of the PDA in Subnautica told me that I will probably die soon from hunger and dehydration. Risk of starvation. Due to this, I very quickly noticed how ridiculous the permadeath option is in the game. This difficulty didn't keep me worried about trying to stay alive from the threats of the in-game world but it kept me worried to not die from hunger and thirst. I got no clue what kind of a metabolism that character you play has, but he definitely should visit the doctor about it, because it's not normal. My hunger and thirst meters went down to almost zero in the first 15 to 20 minutes of gameplay. On the first building, I was able to find a bit of food and water to keep me alive for a short bit, but later on, finding enough food to satisfy the tummy became such a tedious process. Overall, I played around 2 hours of the game, and I ain't gonna lie, I most likely spent more than an hour just trying to eat up and drink up to stay alive. The ship has some sort of a fishing rod that you can use to gather food from the lower layers of dust. But for that, you need to find or craft a lure. The whole process of getting food looks like this. Grab the lure, attach it to the rod, reel it down, wait, reel it up, collect the food, cook the food, and then eat the food. This 8 step process usually takes around 2-3 to three minutes and barely makes your hunger meter go up. By the time you catch some more food, the hunger meter basically goes down to the same level it was before the initial catch. I don't know how about you, but I don't consider repeating the same process over and over again multiple times in a row and more than once in an hour of fun. Honestly, this kinda sounds like the definition of insanity was talked about in Far Cry 3. SHUT THE F*** UP! Man knew what he was talking about, because I was definitely going insane with that. Risk of starvation. Are you hungry again? After spending a considerable amount of time trying to satisfy the tummy of a Godzilla by the looks of it, I was finally able to lift off with my blimp and look for places to explore. I set course to the objective, set the cruise control, and decided to gather some materials while flying thanks to some contraption the ship came with. After a while though, I had enough resources and was thinking what else I could do. And you guessed it. Attach this, send that down, wait, reel it up, take it, cook it, eat it, reel it, grab it, cook it, eat it. I can't handle this. I'm gonna throw up. Okay, I didn't literally throw up, but doing this over and over again really killed my whole mood of continuing to play this game and see what it can offer. And I get it. You might say that it's on me, that I chose the permadeath difficulty and now I am crying online that this game is too hard and that I am making this video just to grab some views. And you might be right about one of these things.
but let's compare the permadeath difficulty on Forever Skies and the game everyone keeps comparing it to, that is Subnautica. The difficulty levels there are simple. We got survival, which is the regular way to play the game, creative, freedom, and hardcore, which is the equivalent of permadeath in Forever Skies. But the way they did it is they just added the feature that if you die, that's it, your save gets deleted. If any of the devs from far from home are watching this video, please give us an option to change the absurd hunger and thirst levels or just give us a custom difficulty option to set it up to our liking. Throwing things at a black hole expecting that this will close it is definitely not fun. Just to make things clear, after all the negative things I said about the game, I do see its potential. I read a good amount of reviews on Steam about how people are liking the game and I also saw a few videos as well where players say they love it. Forever Skies can definitely evolve into a great survival game considering it is still in early access. The game has a unique setting that a lot of people, including me, found appealing at the start. It has a comprehensive crafting system, the general game things like performance, responsiveness and stuff like that seem to be working great. The game also looks graphically gorgeous. But unfortunately, some tedious mechanics that I mentioned previously are just tanking my enjoyment level with Forever Skies too much for me to continue playing the game for the time being. Hopefully the devs are going to make some changes to the difficulty options in the future. Maybe later at some point, I will try the easy or normal difficulty of the game and that will change my view on it drastically. Who knows? What are your thoughts on Forever Skies? Have you even heard about this game before? Let me know in the comments down below if I'm talking nonsense about it or do you agree with me? If you like the video, drop a like on it, share it with anyone who would be interested in trying out a new survival game and subscribe to the channel for more gaming content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.